Hello, uh, growing number of data regarding childhood voiding dysfunction have been presented recently. Considering that bladder instability plays a major role in this voiding problem, anticholinergic drug should be the main element for the pharmacologic treatment. Surprisingly, the data of anticholinergic drug use in this population has been remitted. In Korea, only oxybutynin chloride have, has been approved in those of age, age over 5 and no other anticholinergic drug is legally permitted for use in children. However, many Korean urologists still prescribe off-label anticholinergic use for children knowing that there is no alternative. Accumulation of their experience would be helpful to verify the efficacy and safety and helps to facilitate approval process in the future. With this background in mind, we gathered the previous experience of oxybutynin use in children with spinal dysropism, most common cause of neurogenic bladder in children. Anticholinergic use in this population has been justified for the preservation of bladder and kidney despite the lack of the safety data. We assumed if we would determine the efficacy and safety of oxybutynin chloride in this population, it may provide significant evidence for their use in children. Here, I'd like to introduce Dr. Yi, the post author in this study. He will summarize this me the method and result for this study. Dr. Yi, please. Hello, I'm Dr. Lee, resident of Seoul National University Hospital. Uh, I introduced our study, uh, material and methods, and results of this study. This study was designed to be a full multi-centered retrospective cohort study and performed with 385 patients. We reviewed the cases of neurogenic detrusor overactivity due to spinal spinal dysrephids and beginning treatment with oxybutynin at least then 15 years old. And there were no other treatments prior to oxybutynin chloride prescribed for neurogenic bladder. Of the 385 files, uh, 121 files were eligible for review. In this study, the primary efficacy outcome parameters were maximum stock metric capacity and end filling pressure before and during oxybutynin treatment. The second parameters were the compliance and the number of incontinence episodes. Other important variables were tolerability, compliance, and safety issues. This table shows the demographic data and clinical parameters of the patients. A larger number of closed spinal dysrepidism cases than the open type. About one third of the patients treated with oxybutynin chloride were less than five years age old. And more than 90% of treated patients received five to 15 milligrams of oxybutynin chloride. The median treatment duration was 19 months. About half of the patients took oxybutynin for more than one year, and over 80% patients showed good tolerance. We compared maximum systematic capacity and end filling pressure to pretreatment values, and there were significant significant improve, improvement following oxybutynin uh, treatment. In the picture B, the mean percentage of the expected age adjusted capacities were also significantly increased by 8%. As secondary parameters, bladder compliance and incontinence status were compared. A significant increase in bladder compliance was seen after oxybutynin treatment. And incontinence status improvement was reported approximately 
This table shows all the worst events occurred following oxybutynin medication in 17 patients. Constipation and facial flossing of mild to moderate severity were the major adverse uh, events. The occurrence of adverse events likely to be related to the central nervous system consists of only two cases of disease. Thank you uh, for your nice presentation, Dr. Lee. Uh, from, this, from this result, we demonstrate the efficacy and safety of oxybutynin chloride in children with spinal dyserapism. This is consistent with the previous data, although the number was not large. The capacity was increased significantly despite the age adjustment, and the pressure was also significantly reduced. One interesting finding I would like to stress was the prescribed dosage was similar to adult care case showing more than 5 mg was used in about 90% of patients. Also, we noted excellent compliance and safety data. Conclusively, we believed our data demonstrated clear advantage and may be used as a pivotal data for future approval process of any anticholinergic drug in children.